I just realized we haven't done any discharge printing yet together. Let's change that today. So what is discharge printing? Well, discharge printing is done by using an ink mixed with some additives that essentially bleach the dye out of the garment that you're printing on and leaves you with either of the raw garment color underneath or a different color pigment that you mix into it. This is most commonly done with water-based inks, but today we're gonna do things a little bit different. Water-based inks and water-based discharge inks require a lot of extra dwell time in the dryer or even a forced air dryer to help evaporate all that water out of the ink for a proper cure. So using a small dryer like this or even smaller stuff can make a discharge job feel like it lasts a damn lifetime. You either have to run them through insanely slow which bottlenecks the dryer or you have to run them through twice. You can use some sort of a low cure fixer additive to kick the speed back up but those usually take up to 48 hours before they fully activate and do what they're supposed to do, so you have to wait all that extra time before you can do any wash testing, and trust me, you want to be wash testing this stuff. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend all that time setting up to print one shirt, wait two days just to see if I got it right before I can go into production. No, that's crazy to me. So for us smaller shops and at-home printers, all of this can slow production down to a screeching halt. But what if I told you you could discharge print with Plastisol? I'm a big fan of Plastisol here. It's super easy to work with for printers of basically any skill level. It has the most accurate color matching and is easily the fastest in production. Well, with the help of some cool bases and additives, you can turn basically any Plastisol ink into sort of like a hybrid discharge. So if you're primarily a Plastisol user, this is awesome because now you can do discharge printing without having to invest in a whole other ink lineup. I'm printing something pretty badass today for my friend's brand North of Nine, who you might remember from this video we did on four color process printing a little while back. We took his ideas and came up with this rad design that's gonna end up a pretty big chest print. So in order to keep that shirt from feeling super chunky or like there's a big hot piece of rubber on your chest in the summertime, we're gonna use Discharge Inks today so that he can deliver a higher end piece to his customers. And since we're doing a print like this today, I figured I'll bring you guys along and show you whatever I know about this stuff. So let's start setting this up. So first of all, the right emulsion is key. Discharge ink will erode and break down a lot of emulsions, so make sure you're using a discharge safe emulsion before you even start, or you're not gonna have a good day. And even with a solid emulsion that's made for discharge, definitely recommend post-exposing that screen before you go to production, just for that extra little bit of safety. But another thing you can do if you don't wanna buy a whole other emulsion or switch up anything in your workflow, is use an emulsion hardener, and that'll allow you to use pretty much any emulsion that you want to, as far as I know. I'm using Green Galaxy Cryo Coat, which is safe for water base and discharge, but I do find with discharge, it slowly starts to break down with runs over 50 pieces, which this is gonna be. Plus, this is gonna be a six color print, and I'm filming this whole thing today, so it's gonna give this ink a whole lot more time to sit on these screens and eat away at it, and I don't wanna take any chances, so I'm gonna use the hardener. As far as screen mesh goes, I'm gonna be running 230 mesh screens for every part of this print today. Once you mix this ink up, it gets pretty thin, so it really has no problem at all passing through a 230 mesh, although you can go as low as a 156 mesh and be totally fine. There's a lot of small detail going in our design today, so 230 is where we're at. So, while those bad boys are drying, let's talk garments real quick. The discharge process only works on organic fibers, so 100% cotton is what you want. I'm sure there's a real scientific explanation as to why, but I'm not gonna pretend like I know it. It does sort of work on tri-blends and 50-50s, but it won't pull the dye out of the synthetic fabrics in there. It'll only pull the dye out of the cotton portion, so it kind of leaves you with a little bit of a vintage, kind of washed out look, which in certain designs can be exactly what you want. But in this case, we want bright, bold colors, so 100% cotton it is. You also wanna test print any shirt that you're gonna use before going into production. Some dyes just don't discharge as well as others depending on their level of quality. Something with certain pigments, certain greens, blues, purples, and some other ones, just they just don't wanna discharge out the same. Another thing that you can run into is over dyeing, which is something that's 
usually kind of left to lower end garments, lower end brands. They might have a shirt in a certain colorway that they have an overstock of or just plain isn't selling and they'll take that shirt and actually dye it again a darker color which is usually gonna be dark blue, black, something like that so that they can get those things moving. So you might think a nice discharge white is about to come rolling out of your dryer and then all of a sudden it comes out like a weird lavender purple or something and you're sitting there going, what the shit? That is because of over dyeing and that is why you always test first. Learning what will discharge well and what won't really just comes with time and experimentation. So don't get bummed if you've run into any problems with it because we all do. It honestly takes years of trial and error with different garments and talking to other printers, sharing information back and forth. I've been doing this for whatever amount of time now and I can tell you I've barely begun to scratch the surface of what garments do what when it comes to discharge. So I'm sure you're gonna ask what I'm printing on today. So what we're using today is the Bella Canvas 3501, which is 100% cotton long sleeve tee. I've discharge printed these things quite a bit and I know that they discharge pretty well for the most part so I know I'm not going to run into any surprises. we're pretty much ready to get this thing going. The beauty of discharge is you do not need an underbase. So that's one less screen that I got to deal with, thankfully, because this thing is already loaded full as it is. And you can also print this stuff wet on wet all the way through so you can leave your flash turned off, stuff it in the corner, Thankfully, I can do that in my case because it gets hot as shit down here really quick. You'll also wanna set up your print order so that you're printing your lightest to your darkest color if you have any colors touching or if you have any traps added, anything like that. This print is set up to be butt registered so there is no overlap going on, but I'm still set up lightest to darkest just because it's a good habit in my opinion. Mixing up the ink, you're gonna need three things. First, basically any Plastisol, as long as it isn't a low bleed, some Plastis Charge base, and some discharge agent. Now there are a lot of different products on the market when it comes to Plastisol discharge bases and discharge agents. I'm running Roundnet's Rau Charge base today, which mixes 50-50 with your Plastisol, and their discharge agent, which you can run anywhere between four to 6% in your mixture. I tend to run it around six, just to get that extra bit of power to discharge out the dyes. Another thing to remember is only mix up as much ink as you need for the job because once you add the discharge agent in here, this stuff only has about a six to an eight hour shelf life. I tend to keep it under six just to be safe, but make sure when you mix this stuff that you're ready to work. When printing this stuff, there's a few things to remember. The first is that you wanna keep a good amount of ink loaded up in your screen and keep your screen mesh flooded at all times. This stuff now has taken on a few water-based characteristics, which means that it will dry out and plug up in your mesh really, really fast. The second is that you really wanna drive this ink into the fabric rather than lay it on top like typical Plastisol. So I'll hit this stuff with two solid passes with a very steep squeegee angle and a lot of pressure just to make sure that I'm getting this ink really saturated down into the fabric. Normally I pull my squeegee, but when I print discharge, I actually switch back to a push just to make sure that I can maintain the pressure required to really saturate that fabric over a long print run. So we got our first print and you might be thinking, what the hell is this? That's because the discharging doesn't actually take place until it's hit with the heat in the dryer. So while it looks really muted and kind of shitty now, check this out. And that is the magic of discharge right there. What was once really muted and kind of terrible looking is now bright, clean, crisp, and has pretty much zero hand feel to it like Discharge is known for and that's why it's so attractive as a high-end printing option. I mean it has really the littlest amount of hand feel to it but once this thing is washed for the first time that will completely go away and it will feel like this print is actually embedded into the fabric of the shirt. So at this point you should be doing a wash test on this thing to make sure that you got a full discharge out of it and to make sure that you got a full cure out of the Plastisol that's mixed in there and that you're not going to end up with any pissed off phone calls from your customers. I've already been printing some other designs for this client for a few days now using this exact same setup so I've already done a wash test I know that this stuff is gonna work so I can go ahead and skip that part and get to work Ugh. 
Yeah, I'm wearing a respirator. That discharge agent is made up of some pretty harsh chemicals and plus it stinks super bad. <laughs> like I can't even take a little tiny whiff of that stuff without wanting to puke. So when printing this stuff, ventilation is definitely key. In a bigger area, it's not as much of a problem, but in this tiny little basement with a low ceiling, it's a big problem. So I gotta rock one of these to counteract that. But anyways, when it comes to curing this stuff, it's basically the same deal as Plastisol. You want your print to hit 320 degrees and dwell there for at least 30 seconds to get a solid discharge and a cure of the added Plastisol ink. Normally when I print this stuff, I push for a little bit more dwell time and a little bit more heat to be safe. So I've got these things running around 340 degrees for 40 seconds. Let's get those finishing touches done. These things are good. This has to be one of the sickest designs that we've ever made and that I've ever printed. Let's check it out. Man, that thing came out good. That right there has to be one of my favorite prints that I've done in the past few months. Everything is just super clean and crisp. I love the colors in this thing. I can tell you right now, I'm definitely gonna be buying one of these. But I hope you guys learned a few things today and maybe added some new weapons to your print arsenal. That's really what these videos are all about. And let me know if you've used this stuff before or if you plan on using it or even just what you thought of today's print, please drop it down in the comments below. And please make sure to slap a like on this thing, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again in the next one. Shit, I got ink on myself already. 30 seconds into filming the video, and I already got ink on myself. Man, I can never tell if I'm overexposed or if I'm just that white because I never see sunlight ever. <laughs> Why am I sweating so much? I'm not even doing anything. I think all of us have some of this stuff shitting on the shit. Shitting on the shitting. We got some plastisol shitting on the shelf. <laughs> Good shot, genius. Smell no, no, here. Come on. Oh, what else do I gotta say? I actually kept notes for the first time ever in how many years of making videos I've never actually <laughs> written down some stuff to say. This is the first time, so I hope this is turning out the way that I'm thinking it's going to. And make sure when you're mixing inks that you actually read and follow the instructions properly because I did not on this one. I don't know what color that is, but I titled it accordingly. Maybe I can make something cool with this and the other ones that I've messed up. Maybe that can be a video. Ugh, God, this stuff stinks so bad. Like, uh, even just the littlest bit of exposure to this, and I just feel sick, like I wanna puke for the rest of the day. It just, ugh, it sucks. Put my mask back on. Yeah.